Hello, everyone, and welcome to our final session in our summer webinar series from the UDC Library, I Need Something to Read. My name is Megan Kowalski, and I am the Outreach and Reference Librarian. Uh, this session is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube later today. I will also be sharing a lot of resources in this session, and I will be sending those links to anyone who registered for today's event. We will also have time for questions at the end, both recorded and unrecorded, but feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat. So what we're going to look at today is four main things. We're going to talk about some self-assessment when it comes to thinking about what you want to read next, where to get recommendations, tracking your reading, both books you want to read and books you've read, and some general reading tips. So first things first, self-assessment. Starting with some questions can help you figure out not only what you want to read, but also the environment in which you are doing your reading. So you want to ask yourself, what are you reading right now? Like, what book are you reading or are you not reading? If you are reading, do you like it? Why or why not? Do you want to keep going with that kind of reading? What are you in the mood for? Fiction or nonfiction? Are you looking for a certain kind of genre? What mood or feeling do you have? Different books have different vibes. We're in the summer and a lot of people like those, you know, lower level beach reads. And I put that in quotation marks because let's not rank our reading. All books are good books. It doesn't matter what they're about or who's done the writing. And what are you interested in right now? What have you been curious or excited about? Is there something in the news you want to read more about? Are you into a hobby that you want to learn more about? Do you want to binge read a specific author? Are you interested in a specific TV show and you want to read about it or find books that that show was based on? Uh, just as an example, my husband and I currently were watching Queen Charlotte, the Bridgerton spinoff series, and I want to get my hands on those Bridgerton books at some point. So these are all things you consider. You also want to think about what do you have time for? You know, what does your calendar look like? Do you want a short read? Do you want a long read? You know, what basically what time do you have to devote to your reading? Where will you be reading this item? Are you going on a beach vacation? Are you reading at home? Is this something you need to read for work? Are you thinking about something you can bring with you to a restaurant? Are you reading on your commute? These are all things to consider when you're thinking about what you want to be reading. What's the season? A lot of people like to pair their reading to either the weather or the time of year or holidays. I used to like to read the only horror books I would ever read right around Halloween. You know, so that's something you might want to consider. Then do you want to be reading with someone else or others in general? You know, do you want to read with your children? Do you want to do a read with a significant other? You know, some people like to read with their spouse simply because it means that they have something to talk about. You also might want to consider, do you want to be reading with a book club? You know, what are you looking to get out of this if you're reading with someone else? You also can think about, do you want to read more than one book at a time? Some people like to have a whole stack of different types they can go through, while others like to have, I'm reading one book for work and one book for home. Some people just want one book. That's it. One book. That's all they want to be reading. So these are some things to consider. Finally, you want to ask, how do you want to read? Are you looking to read a print book, an ebook, or an audiobook? How you want to read might depend on, you know, what's available to you or where you're doing your reading. On a commute, some people really like those e-readers because it's something simple they can slip into their bag or an audiobook so that they don't have to hold anything. Um, and then what category of material are you interested in? Do you want to read prose? Do you want to read poetry, plays, coffee table, or art books? Are you looking for something like a workbook that you can actually physically engage with? You want to keep all of these things in mind when you're deciding what to read next, simply because it can help you determine where you want to look to find those recommendations. And that's what we're going to talk about next, is where to get those recommendations. And there are so many places to find book recommendations. So I recommend trying to find a few that work for you. Not all of these will work for you, or they might not work for you in a specific situation. So these are just some ideas. So the first one is serendipity, just encountering book titles as you see them. 
And you can do this in a few ways. You know, you can peruse the shelves at your local library or bookstore, or if you happen to live in a city with a lot of little free libraries, you can go, you know, scroll through those to see what books you can find. You can also ask the people who work in these locations. Librarians and booksellers are more than happy to give you recommendations. And this is where you can judge a book by its cover. Don't hesitate to pick up a book simply because you're drawn to the cover art. The marketing behind that and the artist behind Behind that have designed those books in a way to grab your attention, and that's okay. Next, you want to think about talking about books with your families and friends. You know, ask what they're enjoying and have them recommend something to you. Or say, I'm reading, you know, this title. Have you read something like that? And you can have these conversations about books. When you're talking with pe you know, two people about books, people are very happy to share what they're reading, and sometimes those recommendations will work for you. You can also find formal reviews. These are best for new releases and roundup lists. And roundup lists tend to come out at the end of the year or sporadically, you know, throughout the year based on, you know, oh, a TV show got popular. Here's a list of books about it. I remember this when the um, HBO series Chernobyl came out. Suddenly there were a ton of roundup lists about books about the topic of Chernobyl. And a lot of these formal reviews are published in newspapers and magazines, the New York Times, the Washington Post, New Yorker, the New York Review of Books. Basically, any legacy media will have some professional book reviews. There are also specialty reviewers, and these are publications that are specifically devoted to reviewing books. Uh, Kirkus Reviews, Library Journal, and Publishers Weekly are trade publications designed for professionals who select books for libraries and bookstores, and these are resources available to you as well. There are also specific literary websites, um, in particular, I can think of Literary Hub or Bookmarks that are devoted to providing professional reviews. There are also a ton of book clubs, and this is great for when you want to create or be in a reading community. And there are celebrity books clubs. You know, Oprah's book club is the biggest one. Reese Witherspoon is another. Essentially, if you like a celebrity, they probably have a book club or at least have released their own reading list. Um, Obama's lists, when he comes out with them, are now like huge deals in the cultural zeitgeist to know what President Obama is reading and listening to. So if you have a celebrity, go to their website or follow their social media, and they probably have a book club. There are also local book clubs, and these are usually put together through bookstores and libraries. Here in D.C., the D.C. Public Library has a ton of book clubs set up at various branches, including some online meetings, and most of the bookstores also offer their own um, book clubs as well. Uh, two of the big ones are Mahogany Books and loyalty books. They have some great bookstores, and same thing, Politics and Prose is another big one. Then there are a ton of award winners. Award-winning books are good for when you want books that are in the cultural zeitgeist or that others are currently reading. And these award winners can be general or they can be genre specific. So big things like the National Book Awards or the Peel of Surprise, these are general categories. And then you have things like the Edgar Awards, which focus on more mysteries and horror, and the Caldecott Medal, which is devoted to children's books. So I've listed a few here. These are by no means the only book awards. There is a book award for every category out there, like the Rita Award is devoted to all those titles in the romance genre. So if you like a specific genre of books, find the book award for it, and you can find some great titles that way. You can also consider your favorite favorite authors. When you find an author you love, go ahead and read their backlist, which is all of their existing works, and then check regularly for new works. You know, Authors tend to publish more than one, even if they say, I'm never going to publish again. They can't help it. It's like marathon runners. They one run, they run one marathon and they want to run another one. And then you can also see who your favorite authors recommend. Many authors are on social media or have newsletters, blogs, or websites. Well, they will make reading recommendations, either based on what they like to read or books they've referenced in their own work. Here in DC, I highly recommend going to the DC Public Library. They have a couple of ways to offer book recommendations. They have the Wowbrary newsletter, which works for other libraries as well, where basically you sign up and it is a weekly email newsletter that shows you all the titles the library is in the process of acquiring. And this includes eBooks, 
print books, and audiobooks. I love this resource. BC Public Library also has a web form you can fill out, and I will share this in the email that goes out to everyone, where they will offer personalized recommendations. And it's just a simple Google form you fill out, and you get a response back. Next, there are podcasts, and there are way too many to list, but you can find them by genre, subject matter, author, new releases. Basically, if there is a category of books, there is a podcast for it. There are a couple on the screen. I try to show you a mix and match. Some of these are author interview based. Some of them are recommendations based. Some of them are library based. Um, you know, there's just a lot out there. Uh, and then there is Book Talk, and this is a trending tag on TikTok, but it has also crossed over to Instagram. Um, a lot of Book Talk covers, you know, young adult novels and romance, but there are other areas as well. And generally, Book Talk falls into two categories. It's either book reviews or haul videos. And haul videos is where the presenter in the video basically shows all the new books they have recently required, you know, acquired and talks about why they're excited to read them. And then the biggie here, we have Goodreads. This is owned by Amazon, so it integrates with any book list you may have developed in your Amazon account. And this is the place for all things books. It is designed for readers. Here you can find recommendations, reviews, and see the ratings others have given this book. You can also use Goodreads to track your TBR or your to be read list and also what you've read. And I'll cover more of that later. I do want to provide one note of caution. Goodreads can, you know, have titles fall victim to review bombing. And this is where people work out their grudges against the author, whether, you know, true or not, and, you know, against material they don't like by providing bad reviews. So take all of those reviews with a grain of salt, but this is a good place to find books and track your reading. Next, we have a ton of websites and apps. Um, you can find these online. Um, the UDC Library has a blog post about most of these. Again, I will be sharing that in the resources I sent out to everyone who registered. But these are just some resources you can use to find books. Excuse me, Book Riot is a great website for offering reviews and recommendations on every genre imaginable. Uh, literature Map, you put in an author's name and find similar authors related to them. Brightly is a tool for parents to help find great books for their kids. And Storygraph is a tool that tracks your reading and then offers personalized recommendations. And Libby is a huge app in the library world. So you can sign up for this on your own, but this is how you can check out books, including eBooks, magazines, and audiobooks from your local library. So now we're gonna talk about tracking your reading. And the first we're gonna start with is to be read or your TBR list. And this is basically reading language for all those books you're interested in reading or looking at. So what to track? First things first, you want to be able to find the books you're interested in. So you want to include things like the book's information, and this can include the title, author, or publication information. You might also want to track how you're interested in, you know, reading this book, whether by audiobook, ebook, or print book. If the book is a part of a series, you might want to track that information so you read the series in order. Um, I personally like to list every book in the series in order in a Word document and then strike them out as I read them. If you're using or trying to find this book online, you might also want to, you know, add a link to where this item is so you can find it again. And then you might also want to consider, does is this available through your local library or is this something you want to buy at a bookstore? You can use a tool like WorldCap to track that down to see if this book is available in a local library near you. There are many ways to track your TBR pile, and we're going to start looking at the digital one. The first is Amazon. You can simply create a list of books you're interested in and find the Amazon page and add it to that list. Again, Goodreads, you can track all the books you're interested in. You just add it to the list there. I personally like to use Pinterest, and this is my personal Pinterest board. I have a books to be read list, and what this screen grab doesn't show is that it's nearly 500 books long. I like Pinterest simply because I can say the cover image and a link. And I have a better recall for why I wanted to read that book or was interested in reading that book when I see the cover image. 
There are also tons of websites and apps. Again, those ones I showed previously. Two of the big ones not uh, shown on that list are Litzy and Library Thing. These are great ways to track your reading. You can also just put together a spreadsheet or a document where you simply list the information you want to track, and that's how you can build your TBR list. Then there's also physical ways to track your reading. You know, the old pen and paper are the perfect way to go. You just write them down, and that's how you can find them again. There are also pre-designed journals you can purchase, and if you're like me and love stationery, those are always fun to have on hand. Or you can have a folder. If you like to clip things out of newspapers and magazines, just clip them out and stick them in a folder. Next, we're going to talk about, you know, tracking your completing rating. And you don't have to do this. It's just if you're inclined. You may want to track what you've already read. And this can keep you from duplicating a book. Or if you're interested, it can give you a reminder so you can reread a favorite. And so what to track? You know, that depends on you. This is all highly selective. What do you want to remember? You know, do you just want the book's information? Do you want a review? Do you want a summary of what that book was about? Do you want to read this item again? So you just need to provide as much information that helps you recall things. Some basic things to track are the title and author. You may want to include the publication information. You could consider adding dates, you know, the date you started it and the date you finished it, or the number of days or hours it took you to finish reading that title. You also might want to consider your own rating and review system. I like to rate my books on a scale of 1 to 10 just to see the average of what I read every year. All of this is up to you. In how you track it, again, there are way, different ways to do it. There is the digital way. Again, Goodreads is great because you can simply move your book from the I want to read list to the to read list. Um, and they have built-in functionality for adding your own review, adding your ratings, and anything else you might want to track. You can also do a simple way of doing this on Instagram. Simply take a photo and share it on your Instagram account, being like, this is what I read. And again, there are more apps and websites than you know what to do with. As mentioned previously, Let's See and Library thing, but some other big ones are Bookly or Book Breeze. These are all tools designed to help you track what you read. And again, you can also have a simple digital spreadsheet or document. I personally have a digital list of books I've read by year where I track the date I started it, the date I finished it, the author, the title, the genre as I classify a book, the rating, and the number of pages. I love to see how many pages I've read of books in a single year. There's also physical ways you can track your reading. Again, there's more pre-made journals out there than you know what to do with with. You can also do a bullet journal. I personally like to have a list of books I've read every year in my bullet journal. Or you can just simply make a list, open a notebook or have a piece of paper and write down whatever it is that you want to track. And we're going to end today with some reading tips. And reading can be as important in your life as you want it to be. Sometimes you hit a rut or a string of bad books and you're just not in the mood to read anymore. That's okay. These tips are designed to help you work through those ruts or get you back into the spirit of reading. So when reading, I always recommend giving it 20 pages or 10%. If you don't like it, that title may not be you for you. Or for you right now, sometimes you're just not in the mood to read that kind of book. You might also want to consider trying to read in a new spot. Sometimes changing where you read changes how you read. I know I personally read differently in the office than I do at home. When I used to have a metro commute, I read differently on the metro train. So changing where you read can influence how you read. Don't force it. You know, we can't always read all the time. Sometimes our brains just need a break. I remember during the pandemic at the start of things back in 2020, at night, I just couldn't read. I couldn't do it. I just had to go to bed and call it a day. Whereas now I'm back to reading for about 15 to 20 minutes every night before I fall asleep. You might also want to consider trying a new form. If you always read a print book, try an audiobook instead. If you're on vacation, you may you know, like those e-readers. Those are great on airplanes. You can also consider setting a reading goal or not. This is entirely up to you. You know, some people like to set these reading goals, you know, and gamify the reading process. And that can include, you know, how many books you want to read in a year, how many pages, how many genres you want to read, what kinds of reading, if you want to finish off, you know, a series you've been interested in. Reading goals are up to you. I used to try to hit 100 books in a year. 
that's laughable now that I have a child. So I have stopped tracking, you know, or setting these reading goals. Instead, I just aim to try to read 10 pages a day. Again, setting yourself a reading goal or a daily minimum of pages is entirely up to you. But if this is trying to help you work, work through, yes, work through a rut, setting a small goal like five to 10 pages or five to 10 minutes of reading a day can really help you get back into the reading process. So I want to thank you for attending today. If you have any questions about this webinar or what our library offers, please don't hesitate to contact us. And this recording will be posted to our YouTube page in about an hour or so. And so now we have time for questions and answers, both recorded or unrecorded. Feel free to unmute yourself or drop your question in the chat. Hello, Megan. This is Ingrid. Hello. Um, I was, I guess a question I was formulating, I, I've noticed there are television shows um, that have interviews and they recommend, they, they, they use the interview or author um, like Bill Maher does or MSNBC or a new show. Where, I guess, what reference would you recommend we find um, where a show has cited uh, books. So generally for that, most of these television shows will have their own websites and you can go back and actually see they'll have like previous guest, and under that they'll have a summary of what they're there for. Um, and so some places I know, um, particularly with things like C-SPAN and PBS and the news shows, they'll have an individual like episode page where they will share resources related to that. Okay. Okay, I'll give that a chat. Okay, I was just wondering if there was anything else besides those. Okay. Yeah, Thank sometimes you. when I've noticed that happening, I'll take a I'll take out my phone and take a photo of the TV screen to remind myself, okay. oh, this is the book I'm interested in. You know, because then it's easier than trying to remember, oh, I gotta go back. What was that thing? Because inevitably by the time I remember to go look it up, I've forgotten who the guest was. It's the same thing when I'm listening to an NPR episode. If they mention a book, I will email that NPR episode to myself to be like, oh, right, I was interested in the okay. book they mentioned in this podcast. Okay, great idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Not seeing anything else come in, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording so we have time for unrecorded Q&A.